Are we ready? <coughs> Take it away. All right, good evening, writers, friends, and all you other members of the Florida Writers Association family. Welcome to the presentation of the 2021 Royal Palm Literary Awards. This is so exciting. It's been exciting already. Uh, this may be a pandemic production, but it honors writers and writing. How could we all not be smiling? My name is Chris Coward, your RP. Let's bring him on board now, Chris. I, yeah, my cue got messed up because your audio dropped. So um, this is the part where I was supposed to pout because we couldn't be in the hotel with a free dinner. Um, so you can say your line now. So I to laugh anyway. All smiling and happy. And now here's Mr. Grumpy Pants. Chris, I'm sorry, but you know, this wasn't under our control. Under the circumstances, this is the best we could do. Yeah, well, that's... This is embarrassing. Chris, would it help if I told you that since this is the only ceremony of the year, we'll be announcing the Youth Awards? That'll... That's not nothing. <laughs> no, it's not nothing. And the Corporate Awards, you know, the Vice Presidents and Presidents Award, and McKay Coppersmith. Well, next year we can go and be in the hotel, right? Please. <laughs> yeah, God. we will try. We will try. Okay. Well, I had my my formal black mask on for the festivities tonight. So you don't need it. And by the way, you look very spiffy. Thank you. You look very nice too, if I can say that without getting in trouble with HR. <laughs> Uh, no, no trouble. Yes, I am wearing my pandemic wear, which is a cocktail dress and bedroom slippers. Uh, yeah, I've got shorts. I took a picture of myself in shorts <laughs> and posted it to the Facebook group. All with right. The suit top. Um, so this is going to be just like last year, right? Well, it'll be a lot like last year, challenges and all. Um, like I still have the world's worst camera and don't even get me started on the microphone. So I really have to enunciate, but it's all good, right? We're here. Still, right. we're working off personal computers in Florida, which means um, sometimes there are technical difficulties. I mean, really, technical gift difficulties? If we do have difficulties, everyone, please be patient. Your patience will be rewarded, and we have a few surprises. I like surprises. How about housekeeping? No, I had to vacuum the stupid rug today. I'm not into housekeeping. <laughs> okay, then we'll keep it short. Did you know that our floors in the 50s and 60s? And so if you get one of those, just know it's simply a way judges can point to areas that may be improved. Doesn't mean failure, never say failure. And to that point, the ones that I've won for in previous years were resubmits because if you don't win you can resubmit and the context that you get back the advice that you get back in your rubrics can make all of the difference so the thing that you're disappointed in next year could be the thing that gives you the big one next year and i also thought of something else and i think everyone knows it um, but you can chat if you're thrilled with someone and it's down there somewhere if you're thrilled for someone tell them using the chat icon at the bottom of the screen. They'll appreciate it. Um, also, we have at least one watch party tonight down in Seminole County, I think. I probably got that wrong, but it's Ariel Hoy's group. She posted on the Facebook page that there's a watch party. So if you're having a watch party, enjoy each other and enjoy the night. Um, also, the RPLA entry form doesn't include a pronunciation key. So if we mispronounce anyone's name or title, we apologize. Oh, guilty many times. Your RPLA chair here mispronouncing names and titles since 20, 2008. When you were, what, 12? Yes. <laughs> okay. So now we can go to the awards, right? Let's go.
what uh, this is one of those technical issues uh, I oh. guess. um never mind sue uh sue is manning the slideshow can we get on with the awards okay let's start tonight with the youth component of the royal palm literary awards this is always a very exciting part um, because of the amazing work done by people who are very, very young. And we'll start off with unpublished poetry, ages 12 to 15. And our first award is Gold, The Rhythm of Rain. And the winner is Ode to Rain by N.M. Collette. Next comes unpublished poetry, ages 16 to 17. Bronze, A Reflection of the Pandemic. And the winner is Normal by Isabel Mesti Colon. Silver, a casual conversation that turns into a friendship and a surprising connection to the past. And the winner is Street Side Conversations Amongst the Crowd by Samantha Leslie. And for gold, a young girl examines her grandmother's weathered hands, which unveil the stories of the past learning the beauty of age, experience, and the power that lies within those little scars. And the winner is Eternal Flame by Andrea Motal. Now let's move on to unpublished short fiction, ages 12 to 15. And we'll go right to gold. Marley's mother's death two years ago has left her with grief and guilt. Now age 12, she writes about the experience from her eight to 10 year old perspective. And the winner is Glioblastoma by Marley Mejia. Now we have unpublished short fiction, ages 16 to 17. Silver, four documents, all detailing the same young man, unravel his conflict through different periods and points of view. And the winner is Pattern Repeats by Anna Guardado. And Gold. A goddess describes the demise of Atlantis. And the winner is The Wrath of Nemesis by Isabel Mesti Cologne. And apparently we had a problem with the chat. If you tried to chat and you couldn't use it, it'll work now. So you can congratulate people and put the little party doohickey that they just put up there. So that's exciting. Um, we're up to published short fiction, ages 16 to 17, gold. Timothy has a brand new wheelchair with a serious twist, a magic button. Three kids, two Martians, and a magic wheelchair. What could possibly go wrong? And the winner is Timothy's Magic Wheelchair, The Martian Overlord by Gabriela Hernandez. To introduce the winner, of the first grand award of the evening. Here is Mark Newhouse, himself an RPLA grand winner, as well as a Florida Writers Collection person of renown, FWA chairperson, and member of FWA's board of directors. We don't have the wherewithal to bring Mark on live, but he was kind enough to videotape his announcement. Let it roll. The, Flo the Florida Writers Association Youth Program helps nine to 17 year olds excel in life by promoting a love of writing and literature. FWA offers many benefits, including our online writing club and entry to the youth collection and RPLA contests where published and unpublished work is judged in five categories and three age groups. All entries receive valuable judges feedback as well as the opportunity to win awards. The Candace Coghill Award in honor of Candace Coghill, a tireless champion of youth literacy and writing is given to the highest scoring entry each year. This year's winner is an unpublished poem in the 12 to 15 year old category by a 12 year old. Congratulations N.M. Collette for your poem, Ode to Rain. Special congratulations to all our youth entrants winners, parents, and teachers. We can't wait to read next year's entries. Thank you. And congratulations to everyone who is involved. And 
to just echo something Mark said, you know, parents do a lot of running around with kids. I've done it myself and just a great appreciation to them for making all this possible for their kids as well. So now we proceed to the adult categories of the Royal Palm Literary Awards, starting with short nonfiction, unpublished creative nonfiction. Bronze, a seven-year-old girl and her father share a memorable afternoon. A week later, his secret wrecks the family. What does he ask of his daughter? Will she promise? And the winner is A Promise Kept by Joan Levy. Silver, with the help of a blue and yellow pill, a medical situation that could have been serious turns into a morning of spirited delight and an encounter with a white rabbit. And the winner is Go Ask Alice by Lauren Leaf. And Gold, a Midwest fashion writer in Manhattan for runway shows, pivots on a dime to cover the World Trade Center attacks and then runs for her life when the towers fall. And the answer is Cataclysm by Catherine U. Fitzpatrick. Very happy I got through that. In practice, I said catechism a bunch of times. So um, there's the broom again. And I think we might have lost Chris. So this must be something she and Sue cooked up. And this is where Chris says that's not supposed to be here and asks Sue to get on to the next slide. And Chris, I think you're the host for the evening for a while, at least. Oh, lucky you guys. In the art category of published blogger article, Silver, whether guarding a windswept realm of 15 wooded acres or a tiny duplex on a city lot, the author's wolfish companion still regards her as a queen worth protecting. And the winner is The Werewolf's Queen by Mary T. Wagner. Gold. Mental Health Matters explored the author's mental health issues as a way to normalize and destigmatize such conversations. Topics included acceptance, suppression, codependence, escapism, anxiety, intimacy, and perfectionism. And the winner is Mental Health Matters by K.E. Garland. Okay, let's move on to the Vice President's Award. Ariel Hoy is an RPLA winning author, a publisher, a marketer, a mom, and in her spare time, the executive vice president of the Florida Writers Association. Last year, she presented the President's Award, and she joins us now by video to present our first corporate award, the Vice President's Award. Ariel? Hello, everyone. My name is Ariel Hoy, and I am your executive vice president for Florida Writers. I am here today because I have the privilege of giving an award to a very, very deserving member who has worked incredibly hard for the organization. This particular person has done so many things over their years of involvement, um, including serving on the executive committee, being the vice president of membership, and this is back when uh, we had a massive spreadsheet that this person had to work with, not the nice database we have today. So this person had to manage this huge spreadsheet. God bless them. Uh, this person has also served um, a lot of positions uh, for RPLA, including being a judge, a judge liaison, a rubric coordinator, helping with making new uh, categories and rubrics just so many different things that this person has done with RPLA behind the scenes that you may not have any idea. This person also has been developing a patron program where members can sponsor other members uh, for membership or other things in the organization, and that is still ongoing. Um, so as you can see, this particular person has done so much for the role, uh, or excuse me, for the org, and on a personal note, uh, this individual is just a beautiful person, very loving, very funny, so funny, um, such a hard worker, very dedicated, and just deserves so much acknowledgement for all of their, their hard work and dedication and time and commitment to the Florida Writers Association. So for 2021, the Vice President's Award 
is given to the amazing, the dashing, the fantastic Paul Yasebeli. Thank you, Paul, for everything you've done for us. And congratulations to Paul. Um, returning to our literary awards now for short, for short fiction, specifically unpublished fast flash fiction or short, short fiction. And we'll start with bronze. Suspension of time for reasons not yet divulged and of unknown significance or lasting impact, fantasy versus reality. And the winner is Dream Machine by Cliff Sharp. Silver, not everyone needs a spaceship. And the winner is Barsoom by Arthur M. Dueco. And gold, Sister's Family has been in the moonshine making business since forever. What will happen to the family tradition and livelihood with no brother to take a turn at sitting still? And the winner is, really cool title too, The Art of Sitting Still by Betsy K. Stoutmoral. Now we move to published flash fiction or short, short fiction, and we'll go right to gold. In this Chinese mythology inspired tale, Chang's ident Chang Yi's identity, sorry, is not what it seems to be as she fights against forces holding her captive on the path to deciding her purpose. And the winner is Moon Flying by Jesse Irwin. And now we'll jump to short fiction, unpublished short story. And we'll go to bronze. Elderly Elizabeth finds herself in heaven where she meets three kings, a drummer boy, and a comical shepherd while she waits for a much waited answer, much wanted answer. And the winner is Behind the Scenes, A Christmas Tale by Amaryllis Gassio Rassler. Silver, on a routine run to the store for milk, Alice disappeared on a lonely country road. In the end, she found there are fates worse than death. And the winner is Have You Seen Me by M.R. Gallows. Gold. An English schoolboy faces the consequences of blurting out the truth during sentencing in an African murder trial. And the winner is Pointing Fingers by Robert Hart. Now we move to published short stories and we'll start with bronze. A man falls hard for a fellow gambler. When his life is on the line, will she, is she really his or just building the experience? And the winner is The Black Ticket by Some Guy. Silver, a railroader forced to retire for health reasons, struggles to reinvent himself with the help of an eclectic cast of characters in a charming Victorian Christmas village. And the winner is Christmas Renewal by Donald J. In gold, Aunt Winifred never saw an injustice she didn't want to write, even if it meant challenging a wealthy developer. And the winner is Aunt Winifred Goes to Court by Elizabeth Weiss Boldstadt. And now we come to the President's Award. But while we're waiting for that, um, just to feel bad about Chris, she puts a lot of work into this every night. I know she's frantically hustling around trying to get this fixed. So, um, you know, when she gets back on and if you see her on Facebook or whatever, if you could throw her some love, I think that'll be good. I know she's probably very frantic right now. Anyway, the President's Award. Here to present the President's Award on video is, appropriately enough, the President of FWA, Rick Bettencourt. Hey folks, it's Rick Bettencourt, your President of Florida Writers Association. I hope everyone's having a great time. Sorry we can't be in person once again this year, unfortunately. But I wanted to take a moment Right now is the time of the, our ceremony where we give out the award for this year's President's Awards recipient. Um, and this year, I have the pleasure of giving out the award to a person who has made a huge impact on our organization. A master of technology, a dedicated individual who spends countless hours in doing more than the responsibilities given within the scope of their work an excellent writer, a great editor, a fantastic web designer, 
This year, I'm proud to present the 2021 President's Award to Marianne DiStefano. This year, Marianne took over as Vice President of Membership. Additionally, she edits and publishes our magazine, The Florida Writer. And on top of all that, Marianne spearheaded the launching of our new website, floridawriters.org. She was forefront in its design, development, and its build. Now, as if that wasn't enough, she manages all incoming emails and the physical mail of our new Winter Park address. It's not only my honor to work with Marianne, as I learned a lot from her, but it's also a pleasure to call her a friend. Congratulations, Marianne, this year's President's Award recipient. Please join me in celebrating Marianne's successes. Thank you. And congratulations to Marianne for the, the win. And now there's somebody competent to help us through the rest of the ceremony. <laughs> oh, that was exciting. Every, well, we made it through. It probably wasn't as good. So let's run on to the winners in unpublished poetry. All right, I have there to was, tell you where we are, so you just keep on going. We're we're good. Okay. Well, this one was mine anyway. So um, this one was so good that it didn't even need a log line. The winner is My Dow by Michael R. Howard. And then Silver, a shell-shocked World War I veteran is cared for by his wife and a tender tale told by their grandson. And the winner is My Father Tells a Story by Claire Maturo. And the gold winner, Adolescence Blossoms on the Road to Danger. And the winner is Wildflowers by Linda Feist. Hey, for Poetry Published. And thank you for your patience, everyone. You just never know when the internet's gonna go out. Uh, Silver, an elderly couple bonds together in a time of medical peril. Their love will sustain them. And the winner is Twilight Love by Linda Krauss. Gold, a contemplative look at reading a paper map with advice for the journey. And the winner is How to Properly Read a Paper Map by Shutta Crum. Yeah, back before we had these, my wife, but by the way, that was a phone. I don't know. My wife would have gotten me that for Christmas because she didn't think I could read the paper map. <laughs> anyway, next is General Catchall, unpublished. Gold. This is an essay describing the author's experiences while teaching and traveling throughout Africa. It describes the hardships and the exciting, sometimes frightening occurrences while traveling from place to place. And the winner is African Experiences by L. Reynolds Anderich. In the category of general catch-all published, bronze, despite living in paradise, islanders struggle with boundaries, betrayal, breaking points, love, loss, guilt, grief, redemption, and hope. It's exhausting. And the winner is Kaya Oeso, literary writer. And I think we lost her again. Anyway, the winner is Kyle. And I thought I was going to get away without having to say this. No. You're back. Am I? Yeah. Okay. Well, good. I didn't know well, I was gone. We're up to silver now, right? Right. Okay. Silver. Murder by toilet plunger. Revenge by pie. A birthday gift trip to hell. 22 stories infused with a gaggle of goosebumps. Don't turn out the lights. And the winner is Tales from the Erie Canal by Barbara Rain. Oh, gold, that's still me. Um, Mary Margaret Alberg, one of the invisibles, brings us a banquet of glimpses into her life and leaves us with food for thought. And the winner is Maggie the Bag Lady by Virginia Nygaard. One of the highlights of each year's conference, whether virtual or on site, is the announcement of the Kay Coppersmith Award. Kay was great, and this is a highlight for me. Anybody who met her knows how much she made a difference 
in our Tampa group and also in the conference. Here to tell us why as well as who won is Chrissy Jackson on video. Kay Coppersmith was known as the Welcoming Arms of Florida Writers. Each year, this award, named in her honor, is presented to a member who best exemplifies Kay's spirit of inclusion and helpfulness. Nominees come from the Florida Writers membership at large. This year, our winner is a writers group leader who makes a real difference to everyone in his group. In the nomination statement, we learned that more than half of his members made the cut for collection number 13 and the RPLA semifinals. Congratulations, David Pierce, Manatee County Writers Group Leader on earning the 2021 K. Coppersmith Award. Okay, I guess we lost Chris again. So let me get back to where we were. You want me to jump in? No, I'm good. I've just got to scroll down. We're ready for the awards for literature for youth now, which is different from youth literature written by youth. And we'll start with unpublished children's picture book. The silver winner, the squirrel, the squirrel of distraction swashbuckles in as an author writes a bunny book. Squirrel and pirate friends have a better idea. And the winner is not another lovey bunny story by Shutter Crumb. I love that. The squirrel of distraction. I'm going to work that into, into conversation. Gold. Afaya hates being the only cheetah at the zoo with stripes instead of spots. But when a furry stranger sees past Afaya's appearance, she learns how to love her stripes. And the winner is Afaya the Striped Zebra by Jesse Irwin. Now we move on to the published children's picture book. Bronze. Margo, a teenager, can't find her favorite scrunchie to wear to a special party. Her search ends at the preschool program of her younger brother, Thomas. And the winner is Margo's Missing Scrunchie by Diana V. Bradham. Silver. How did a dog named Turtle and a turtle named Dog happen? Learn how this true story happens for big-hearted Charlie and his sister Adele. And it's a coloring book, too. And the winner is Big Hearted Charlie's Coloring Book by Krista Keating Joseph. And gold. Kling is an exclamation point who can only be in a book twice. But hilarity ensues when he continues to jump into the story and make things too exciting. And the winner is Kling's Party by Ariel Hoy. Next is unpublished early reader or chapter book, Silver. Two animals from different habitats meet. Whose habitat is better, the desert or the jungle? And the winner is Flow Flow Keeps the Legend Alive by Dakota Orlando. And gold. Gusty wants more time to play, who doesn't? So he grabs some extra time, or he tries to, until a lady mouse teaches him that nobody can do that because time is a gift. And the winner is We Don't Have Time, Gusty by Lynn Schiffhorst. In the category of published early reader or chapter book, Silver, a beautiful sailboat appears at a shipyard. Upton, his human father, and Watson are asked to find its owner. The boat appears to be brand new, but it's almost 100 years old. And the winner is Time Tale by D.G. Stern. And gold. When Candy Bar tries cheating on his spelling test, two mischievous dogs interrupt his plans until Chompy comes to the rescue with a clever solution. And the winner is The Spelling Test by Nancy Biol. And we move on now to unpublished middle grade fiction, Bronze. When sent to live with relatives, 12-year-old biracial Bonnie takes inventory of herself. She must embrace herself for who she is or return to her life as a loser. And the winner is Ghost Girl by Patty M. M. Walsh. Silver. When a lonely 12-year-old girl dis discovers her dad's last scavenger hunt, she races across Beijing to unearth secrets of his past while staying one step ahead of a mysterious thief. 
And the winner is Renly's Guide to Photography by Jesse Irwin. And gold. Facing her failings with a boy who torments her, a girl fights to adopt a snarky stray cat, hoping he can save her unpredictable great-grand from losing her memory. And the winner is Turnabout by Susan Lloyd Davies. Now we move on to unpublished young adult or new adult. Bronze. The Terrace, the place where children find out if their greatest strength can overcome their, their greatest weakness. And the winner is Children of the Terrace by Stephen Charles. Silver. Two leprechauns and a Kerry Bog pony team up to rescue a captured family of leprechauns and save their clan from leprechaun hunters. They must avoid being captured and turn to gold themselves. And the winner is The Clada by M.R. Street. And gold. Unaware of her magic powers, Tima undertakes a journey with a brooding shapeshifter to find the descendants of the legendary guardian and she discovers that her future may not be her own. And the winner is Strandlock by K.L. Small. Now we move to the category of published young adult or new adult, starting with bronze. In 1829 Spanish California, 14-year-old Diego is captured by reptilian aliens, becoming a slave on their spaceship. Can he unite his fellow slaves to fight a more deadly enemy? And the winner is Moon Crusher by Susan Kite. Silver. When his grandfather struggles to reclaim their family home in Poland, David faces his fears to discover how his family was murdered during the Holocaust. And the winner is My Family Secret, The Holocaust by Mark H. Newhouse. And gold. 16-year-old Stevie is convinced that the tumor in her brain is opening a direct line between her and God. Her parents are pretty sure it's just killing her. Not ready to part with the divine, she enlists the help of a cult and embarks on a battle between her faith and her future. And the winner is Mass by Kristen Durfee. So... There you go. And we're back to the broom. And I really wish Chris were on for this part because there's a whole thing with the broom. And it was something that Chris put in place. And I will tell her story for her. And it's all about a broom. Chris, the RPLA, yes. Let's let Chrissy tell this story. Chrissy okay, Jackson Chrissy. has joined us. Go for okay, it. we do have a story to tell, Chris, and it is well worth hearing. RPLA has had a significant change in the background this year. After more than a decade of bang your head against a brick wall spreadsheets, we've migrated to a Kintone database for our judge data and contest record keeping. This is a big deal, an enormous project fraught with danger, and we made it to the promised land largely because of one person whose dedication and diligence were truly amazing. Not only did this person design the workflows, screen layouts, and reports, she trained the operating staff consisting primarily of Tammy Lowe, Chrissy Jackson, and Chris Coward. The significance of the broom? Well, when Chris started using the system, she was terrified. Elaine followed her electronic footsteps every step of the way. Chris joked that Elaine was following her with a shovel to clean up the messes. Gracious as always, Elaine said, oh, no, 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 more like a broom. It's no exaggeration to say that things would have been a lot harder, maybe impossible without her. All this is to say an enormous thank you to our beloved Ms. Broom, a one-time only award for one-of-a-kind teammate, helper, and friend. Thank you, Elaine. Elaine Senegal is a former FWA secretary. Six years ago, she co-created the FWA website and continues to support website experiences for our membership. She volunteers in many capacities. 
Elaine has a business science degree and programming certificates that fulfill her day job as an integration data analyst and application instruction writer. In her downtime, she flirts with her hubby, talks to the puppies, stares at the clouds, and writes cozy mysteries as Elaine Bramman. Sometime in the future, she hopes to find the time to publish the third book in the series. Elaine, we have a lovely room, which looks nothing like the one on the screen, which will be mailed to you when we mail the other trophies. Thank you, Elaine. Chris, you're muted. I don't think Chris is back yet. Oh, yeah, no, I'm she's back. back. Oh, there it is. There's the room. <laughs> oh, thank you, Elaine. Oh. If we had had an in-person um, conference, we would have arranged for a UPS hunk guy to, to give this to you personally, but we'll mail it when we mail the other trophies. Isn't she adorable? Yes, I'm adorable. Okay. I think you got a hunk guy right here. I mean, come on. <laughs> no, we, ha we had your uniform already. I don't look good in brown. Um, <laughs> anyway, now we're up to our next grand award this is the award for best children's book and it's given to the entry with the highest certified total score among the genre categories children's picture book early reader or chapter book also middle grade fiction regardless of publication status published or unpublished young adult and new adult entries aren't eligible for this award but they are considered for published and unpublished book of the year honors provided they meet the other criteria such as word count. So the log line for best children's book is, Pling is an exclamation point, who can only be in a book twice, but hilarity ensues when he continues to jump into the story and make things too exciting. And the winner of the Royal Palm Literary Awards best children's book for this year is Pling's Party by Ariel Hoy. <laughs> Previously an elementary teacher, Ariel is a five-time RPLA award-winning author and the owner of Orange, Pub Orange Blossom Publishing. She's an editor, writing coach, publishing consultant, speaker, and contest judge. She's also an RPLA officer, or not RPLA officer, FWA officer, and sometimes she finds time to sleep, apparently. She's also the author of the Complete Revision Workbook for Writers, Falling Into You, and the children's book's Grumbler and Joyride, as well as the editor for the How I Met My Other anthology series. She loves dogs, babies, and chocolate. And when she isn't writing or editing, she loves diving into a good fantasy romance. Awesome, Ariel. Congratulations. Okay, as we did last year, we're going to give out all the awards for unpublished book length works followed by unpublished book of the year. After that, we'll have some similar fun with published works. So unpublished book length nonfiction, autobiography or memoir, silver. The first wrinkle is a memoir of four adults that grew up in foster care and its effects on their lives. Also interviewed are foster parents, first responders and volunteers. And the winner is the first wrinkle, by Wendy L. Samford, PhD. Gold, I lost five loved ones within seven months. Unable to cope, I made disastrous decisions propelling me on an odyssey through a commune, my life devolving into depression and alcoholism. And the winner is Heart Thieves by Kobe Lee. Now we move on to fiction, unpublished, blended genre. Silver, a depressed teenage boy on the run from a psychiatric facility witnesses a violent robbery. When an opportunity for retribution arises, he must overcome his fragility to ensure justice. And the winner is Hell's Rainbow by Edward Burke. And gold, this is the story of the marriage of Pauline Pfeiffer and Ernest Hemingway. Historically factual, it includes character sketches of the well-known players of the 1920, 1920s Paris expat set. And the winner is 
For Thee by Claire M. Johnson. Okay, moving on then with unpublished historical fiction, an exciting one, Gold, Defying the Odds, Catherine Learns to Read, but during the Renaissance, getting caught with the wrong book means death. Her only defense is to refer to the illicit texts. And the winner is From the Drop of Heaven by Juliet Godot. Now we move to unpublished mainstream or literary, Gold, a family is destroyed when Brandon disappears into North Korea. 20 years later, when he is returned to America, all their lives are once again changed forever. And the winner is Boy Comes Home by Veronica H. Hart. Oh, go Ronnie. Okay, next we have Unpublished Mystery or Crime, Bronze, a series of baffling murders, an ancient secret, and a romance denied, lead Jet and her best friend Gwen on a journey of discovery, shocking revelations, and life-changing decisions. And the winner is Murder on Banyan Isle by Sharon L. Muneer. Silver, weird news reporter Alexander Strange is on the trail of Mr. Manners, a self-appointed vigilante punishing the rude and insane in Florida. He's a busy guy. And the winner is Mr. Manners by J.C. Bruce. Gold. When in 1904, a serial killer threatens the women of Portland, Oregon, an educated woman yearning for a more meaningful life must prove her eccentric older husband's innocence. And the winner is a Lamentation of Swans by Carrie Blystale. Now we move to unpublished novelette, starting with Silver. After a full service bar mysteriously appears in a Catholic church one Christmas Eve, a homeless man finds dignity and friendship. And the winner is Seats for Three at the Bar by Lynn Schiffhorst. Gold, and I'm reading this the way it's presented. Oscar is a dick. Driving a stolen car while drunk and distracted, he collides with an owl and wrecks the car. Thus, Oscar's bizarre demise is set into motion. And the winner is The Requisite Desolation by Kelly Sanford. Moving on to unpublished thriller or suspense. Gold. While attempting to solve a 15-year-old double homicide, small-town cop Jake Long contends with an unfaithful wife, killer twins, and a woman who uses snakes to murder her enemies. And the winner is From Hell's Heart by Dana J. Summers. I think Mr. Manners would have had a lot to, a lot of work to do if he were in that fiction. <laughs> yeah, world. I dare say. <laughs> okay, we are ready for the countdown to the unpublished book of the year grand award. This award is conferred to the unpublished entry 35,000 words or more with the highest total score. Entries can be fiction, any of the genres, nonfiction or general catch-all. And we'll start with the fourth runner up on the basis of total certified points. The fourth runner up for unpublished book of the year, Weird News reporter Alexander Strange is on the trail of Mr. Manners a self-appointed vigilante, punishing the rude and insane in Florida. He's a busy guy. The fourth runner-up is Mr. Manners by J.C. Bruce. Third runner-up, unpublished book of the year. Two leprechauns and a Carrie Bog pony team up to rescue a captured family of leprechauns and save their clan from leprechaun hunters. They must avoid being captured and turned to gold themselves. And the third runner up is The Clado by M.R. Street. The second runner up. Unaware of her magic power, Tima undertakes a journey with a brooding shapeshifter to find the descendants of the legendary guardian and discovers her future may not be her own. The second runner up is Strandlock by K.L. Small. First runner-up, unpublished book of the year. When in 1904, a serial killer threatens the women of Portland, Oregon, an educated woman yearning for a more meaningful life must prove her eccentric older husband's innocent. 
And the first runner up is A Lamentation of Swans by Carrie Blystale. Now we're up to the unpublished book of the year. In the log line. While well, attempting to solve a 15-year-old double homicide, small-town cop Jake Long contends with an unfaithful wife, killer twins, and a woman who uses snakes to murder her enemies. The 2021 Unpublished Book of the Year is From Hell's Heart by Dana J. Summers. Dana J. Summers is an editorial cartoonist and a comic strip artist turned author. He's written five novels and lives with his wife in Orlando. This is not Dana's only RPLA Grand Award. In 2018, he won Unpublished Book of the Year that year too. Different year, different judges, but everybody agrees he's got talent. And this just in, the Florida Writers Executive Committee has been busy and this next major corporate recognition was all their idea. They are erecting a 30-foot statue outside of our Hilton. Okay, maybe not, but we have this video to honor a member whose shoulders, arguably, we all stand upon. Now to announce the secret recognition, this person's favorite announcer, Mr. Doodley. Congratulations, Chrissy. We all love you. So now we begin awarding the prizes for published book length fiction and nonfiction, beginning with nonfiction. This is published autobiography or memoir, Silver. Here's a book with absolutely no central conflict or off center conflict for that matter. It's just a happy book by a happy man. And the winner is 50 Years of Christmas Letters by Jack Pendray. Gold, after a brutal attack on her teenage daughter, a Vietnamese woman struggles with memories of her own escape from communism and a crisis of faith. And the winner is The Life She Once Knew by Vanna Nguyen. Now we move to, now we move to published biography, Gold. American Ripper is the true story of the case of Gerard John Schaefer, a Florida law enforcement officer who was a prolific serial killer in the late 1960s and early 1970s. And the winner is American Ripper by Patrick Kendrick. 
Okay, we turn to published educational or informational bronze. Is it your dream to buy an RV and travel? Be informed by getting answers to your questions about RVing. Beginners and experienced RVers will benefit from this book. And the winner is RV Life by Raymond Hall. Silver. This book explains objectively the five religious belief systems the majority of the world's populations follow. It is written in layman's terms without dogma to promote understanding and tolerance. And the winner is Getting It, Then Getting Along by L. Reynolds and Derek. And Gold, American's Alligator examines the colorful and sometimes conflicted relationships our species has had with alligator, oh my, uh, Mississippiensis, and it's a real word, we looked it up. And the winner is America's Alligator by Doug Alderson. I'm happy that your internet came back so you could <laughs> say that word. Well, anyway. Well. <laughs> Moving on to published history, Gold, an entertaining and provocative look at genre fiction from Beowulf to the time machine to Harry Potter and how it changes human societies often in profound and unexpected ways. And the winner is Gumshoes, Fangs, Rockets, and Spies by Ken Pelham. Hey, that's it for nonfiction. We now take up the published book length fiction categories beginning with blended genre. Silver, after a lifetime of lies, she must now decide to run or stay and tell the truth, which will break the hearts of those she loves most. And the winner is A Million Little Lies by Betty Lee Crosby. Gold, when his nemesis possesses his girlfriend through an old necklace, what's a reincarnated knight turned antique dealer to do? uses magic to rescue his damsel and save the world. And the winner is Hot Magic by Katherine Keene. Now for Chris Coward's favorite category, un or published fantasy. <laughs> and we'll go right to gold. An unassuming house cat, Albie, watches Professor Wazoom build an unusual triangular doorway. The professor vanishes and to Albie's astonishment, the door opens. Albie's compassion for his missing friend gives him the strength to jump through, and he's transported to the magical world of Jumbalot. And the winner is Journey to Jumbalot by Ryan Wakefield. Published historical fiction. Bronze, a British plot to seize the Floridas, a threatened Indian uprising, and a vicious one-time pirate desperate ends at sword point. The winner is War Clouds Over West Florida by Lee Gramlin. Silver, in a world engulfed in the flames of revolution, pioneer Fergus Moorhead is captured by Indians and embarks on an epic journey Okay, I think Chris is having issues again. The winner is, the winner is West of the Alleghenies by Craig Pennington. And gold. Florence, July 1873. Claire Claremont, the last survivor of the Byron Shelley Circle, tries to learn the fate of Allegra, her daughter by Lord Byron, and finds herself in increasing danger. And the winner is A Shadowed Fate by Mary Ambrose. Turning to LGBTQ+, gold. All cybernetic soldier Vic Corrin wanted was to be human again. And now all she wants is Kelly. But machines can't love, can they? And the winner is Threadbare by L.E. Iyer. Now we move on to published mainstream or literary, gold. Five characters struggle with control. Their choices take them to the brink of death, changing their lives forever. They must find their key to the future or die. And the winner is Keyhole Mysteries, Witness Five by Nancy Busher. Now we move on to published mystery or crime, and we'll go to bronze. 
A strong-willed woman must partner with a detective who can't stand her to find a missing fiancé. And the winner is Before She Left by Allison R. Solomon. And Silver. A disruption of a small North Florida college town by two murders throws professors Ariadne Caulfield and Judith Sheridan into danger and Ariadne into love. And the winner is Shakespeare's Secrets by Bonnie Hoover Brandlin. And Gold. Alexander Strange agrees to help a novelist investigate her brother's death in Key West. But when the sharks start circling, he knows he's in over his head. And the winner is Strange Currents by J.C. Bruce. Jew, Chris. Or perhaps not. Published novelette, Silver. Are you there? Okay, Silver. A father and son journey from the year 2367 to 1816 and find themselves among the subjects of Theodore Greicholt's searing masterpiece, The Raft of the Medusa. And the winner is The Medusa Jump by Ken Pelham. You want to take the rest of this one? I sure do. I never know when I'm on or off because everything is out of sync. But okay, uh, we're on to gold, right? Yes. Okay. Muriel has a secret. She doesn't dare tell anyone for fear of being locked away forever. When a total stranger discovers her reality, will he help her or condemn her? And the winner is, I love this, Among the Blue Horses by L. Andrews Pat. Now we move to publish novella, starting with bronze. A young woman disappears during a recreational scuba dive off Grand Cayman Island. Was the cause corporate negligence or suicide? You, the reader, will decide during the trial. And the winner is The Wall, Chronicle of a Scuba Trial by Lawrence Martin. Silver. Maggie Garman confronts her estranged daughter in her past when they roll down the I-95 in a tumble-down RV to join her on Amelia Island. And the winner is The Last Chapter by Barbara Bond. And gold. Pitt Rutherford is blackmailed into besieging a castle, but the only woman he's ever loved is inside. What's worth more, his son's life or a second chance at true love? And the winner is an, Outlook's, an Outlaw's Desire by Katherine Keene. She has been busy. Okay. For published romance, Silver, Finley Reed, and Ava King want a relationship. But with the past coming back to haunt them, they'll have to fight for the future they both want. And the winner is Kisses, Family, and Hope by Sophie Bartow. Gold. When his nemesis possesses his girlfriend through an old necklace, what's a reincarnated knight-turned-antique dealer to do? Use his magic to rescue his damsel and save the world. And the winner is Hot Magic by Katherine Keene. Now we move on to published science fiction. All cybernetic soldier Vic Korn wanted was to be human again. Now all she wants is Kelly. But machines can't love, can they? And the winner is Threadbare by L. E. Iyer. Moving on to published thriller or suspense, Silver. After global attacks that dwarf 9-11, Lieutenant Faraz Abdallah of Task Force Epsilon leaves the P PTSD ward and goes undercover in Operation Blowback to shut down the terrorists for good. And the winner yeah. is... Blowback by by Al Pesson. Gold. There they are, Polly and the captain, two war damaged veterans walking down a lonely western road. One is a ser vicious serial killer, but which one? And can they be stopped? And the winner is Buddies by Kip Casino. Now we move to published women's fiction. Silver, after a lifetime of lies, she must now decide to run or stay and tell the truth, which will break the hearts of those she loves the most. And the winner is 
A Million Little Lies by Betty Lee Crosby. Gold. The past is not an easy force to be reckoned with. And the winner is Rain by Lisa Bowie Collard. And now I'm stalling because I really want Chris to come back so we can do the published book of the year. But I don't think you want me to sing, so I'll probably move forward anyway. We've reached the last awards of the evening, the big prize, published book of the year in the four runner-ups. The top award is conferred to the published entry, 35,000 words or more, with the highest total score. Now, the entries can be fiction, nonfiction, or general catch-all. This is, so I'm gonna read both parts. So this is the part where I say, the only entries in contention have already won gold genre awards, right? And then this is where Chris says, in a voice a little higher than mine, not necessarily. Remember, the grand awards go by total score, not genre. Strange things can happen when you compare across genres. For instance, a few years ago, we announced the genre winners for unpublished ministry, third place, second place, first place. It had been a long day and the second place winner whose name we won't divulge but initials were Susan Boyd was exhausted. She'd been running the silent auction all weekend and needed to unwind so she slipped quietly out of the ballroom. The time came to announce the grand awards and we only called the top five scorers to the front of the room but there were only four. One was missing, it was Susan. And then Chris says, Yup, having not won first place for her genre, she figured she was out of the running for a grand award. So when we announced the first runner up, she wasn't there. And then I say, yeah, you, Chris Coward and Chrissy panic. This is really hard with too many Chris's. Um, yes, we did, said Chris Coward. Fortunately, you, Chris Hamilton, were in the back of the room and you went running out to the bar. Amazing that I knew where that was. Sure enough, she was there, and you, Chris Hamilton, corralled her back. Chrissy and I, Chris Coward, meanwhile, had to try to be entertaining, sort of like I am right now. So, I said, you're saying that a second place genre winner was the second place grand prize winner placing right behind the entry that won the genre award in the same category. That's weird, said I. Chris Coward says, it can get weirder. I don't think that's possible, but I'll go on with the script. Remember, unpublished book of the year and published book of the year awards can be given only to the entries with more than 35,000 words. And we have four genre categories that allow for shorter entries. Then Chris Hamilton says, don't tell me. And Chris Coward says, yep, if an entry is under 35,000 words, it could win a genre award, but not be eligible for a grand award. So conceivably, and then Chris Hamilton says a silver winner could be book of the year. Chris Coward says, or an entry that won no genre awards. Then I say, huh, interesting. You're saying to expect the unexpected. And then Chris Coward says, yes, I am. Shall we get on with the announcements? And Chris Hamilton says, oh, please do. Anyway, aren't we going to discuss the prizes? A large trophy, a medallion, a check, extra seals, extra publicity, a spot on Good Morning America on Monday. And then Chris Coward says all of those things plus, well, except for the Good Morning America thing, plus an invitation to be next year's person of renown in the collection and something else to the Omega Project. Chrissy, you're on screen. Did you want to do the Omega Project? I do. Thank you. As if the award, the medallion and publicity aren't enough, there's another perk that comes with winning published book of the year, courtesy of FWA lifetime member, David Michael Harding. This perk is to help the winner get reviews. Some of you may remember David Michael's wife, Catherine DePupo Harding, who for many years was an enthusiastic member of Florida Writers. Catherine was a vibrant supporter of the arts and numerous charities. She was also known for her countless acts of kindness. In 2018, at the age of 45, she died of cancer. 
bringing her many philanthropic efforts to a halt. But David Michael created a foundation in her honor and the Catherine de Pompo Harding Memorial Trust continues her work. One of the foundation's projects is the Omega Project for FWA. In 2016, while Catherine attended the Florida Writers Conference, she was impressed by the support RPLA gave to its published book of the year, but she wanted to do more and the seeds of the Omega Project were sown. Here's how it works. The foundation is going to purchase 50 copies of the published book of the year. Members who in good standing who wish to participate to review the book, contact Chrissy Jackson at cjackson at floridawriters.org. And don't worry, you don't have to remember it to get their name on the list. In case you weren't able to write that down, the address is in the RPLA program on the Florida Writers website. It's a win-win. Not only are reviewers supporting the winner, but also they receive an award-winning book to enjoy and treasure. RPLA and FWA are forever enriched for the generosity of David and the inspiration of Catherine. The Omega Project truly embodies FWA's credo, writing helper, writers helping writers. David, we know you're in the audience and we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And now for the announcements. Absolutely. The fourth runner up published book of the year. In a world engulfed in the flames of revolution, pioneer Fergus Moorhead is captured by Indians and embarks on an epic journey to return to the woman he loves. And the fourth runner up is West of the Alleghenies by Craig Pennington. The third runner up for published book of the year, Florence, July, 1873. Claire Claremont, the last survivor of the Byron Shelley Circle, tries to learn the fate of Allegra, her daughter by Lord Byron, and finds herself in increasing danger. And the third runner-up is A Shadowed Fate by Marty Ambrose. And Chris is back! Yay! And Chris is muted! Not anymore. <laughs> hey, where, where are we? Second runner-up. Oh! Okay. All right. I'm scrolling. All right. I'm doing second runner up. You're okay. doing the oh. second runner up. Oh, this is wonderful. This is so exciting and so different. Um, second runner up published book of the year. Not everything is as it seems here in space or in your mind. And the second runner up is Captain Arnold and other tales of the abnormal by Arthur M. Dwyko. And the first runner-up for published book of the year. Despite living in paradise, Islanders struggle with boundaries, betrayal, breaking points, love, loss, guilt, redemption, and hope. And the first runner-up is Keo Hueso, Literary Writings and Artwork from Key West by Vicki Riley. Okay, and on to the published book of the year. Wish we had like drum rolls or something. Okay, here's the log line. Murder by toilet plunger, revenge by pie, a birthday gift of a trip to hell. 22 stories infused with a gaggle of goosebumps. Don't turn out the lights. And the published book of the year is Tales from the Erie Canal by Barbara Rain. Barbara writes horror short stories with delightfully creepy twists and quirky personal essays inspired by oddities that bounce her way. She admits to being addicted to dachshunds. Now, what's next? This almost concludes our ceremony for 2021. It's certainly been interesting. <laughs> <sighs> so sorry about the internet. That's just nuts. Anyway, huge thank you to the RPLA team and most especially the entrance. There's more in store for you. RPLA returns rubrics to all entrants, so watch your inboxes and be sure to check your spam folders just in case a message decides to wander in there. With 577 entries, sending out the rubrics takes some time, so please allow 30 days. Winners, you will receive a separate message right away with your winner's electronic badge and some media release templates 
so you can share your good news with the world. And they are sitting in my outbox. If I keep my internet, all I have to do is hit send. Look for your trophies in the snail mail. They are all packed up and they have a pre-opening appointment Wednesday with the post office, which was the first day they could give us a private uh, appointment, which they seem to want because there's so many of them. We, we have so many good writers. Oh, not me. Okay. And that's, I hope that's wine because you, you need it and deserve it. Anyway, uh, thank you all. Congratulations to the winners and for the published books, buy them. Holidays are coming up. What better way to celebrate than with an RPLA award-winning book? And we'll see you next year in person where we don't have to worry about Chris's internet. Thank you all, if you can hear me. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs>